Let's do it. All right, here we are. Let's do this. Hey guys, I'm Bren. I'm the host of the Garden Chat Live going on right now. I'm super excited. I'm actually streaming live here with Richard Campbell. Uh, hey, Richard. Hello, how are you guys? <laughs> he's, he's all the way in uh, the Washington, D.C. area, correct? Yes. Um, and you can follow him on Twitter at Two Soil Less. Is their their stream there? They've got some beautiful images, and and we're gonna dive right in here. I'm pretty excited to um, talk about those plants you have growing behind you. It's it's a farm. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Well, we have our what we're calling our basement farm, <laughs> full of a variety of crops growing in gravel. Uh, awesome. this, this is called gravel gardening, the process of growing crops and rocks absent of soil and fertilizer. So everything you see here were planted in these small cups of rocks right. uh, sometime between February and uh, last week. Okay. Some of these things are, you know, like it's a couple months old and a lot of it's a couple weeks old. And so the science behind this is called geological agriculture, something that was actually coined in the late 1800s, but discarded wow. out of the agriculture community. Um, the reason you can see this happening with these rocks is because river rock, also known as sedimentary rock, we use it as a mulch and in construction, it's available in most stores. Well, that river rock has nutrients in it already for plants. Okay. Uh, basically, um, from a geological perspective, there are three types of rock on the planet. The scientists in the turn of the century, 1900s, studied igneous and metamorphic rocks and their effects on plants. And they ruled them out to be ineffective. Those are land-based rocks okay. that they didn't study was rocks from the water and the rocks from the water have nutrients basically the sediment of the sea mm -hmm. dead fish leaves trees other organic life falls to the seafloor and fossilizes into rocks over hundreds of thousands of years that's something so um yeah let's talk about that a little bit um first of all um, welcome to our presentation today. I'm Bren from uh, Garden Chat Live, and I'm speaking live streaming here with uh, Richard Campbell. And Richard, tell us um, your website again. Where can people find out more about what we're talking about today? www.tosoilless.com. To Soil Less. Awesome. And if you're joining us live on the Blab right now, um, please feel free to ask questions. Um, this is going to be, this is really cool information Richard is sharing with us today um, because basically you can grow food anywhere. And, you, uh, you know, as long as you have these, you know, the right kind of rock, the river rock and some good seeds, which uh, Richard recommended uh, to me last week and on Twitter, peas. Peas are like his favorite <laughs> because they're quick and you can eat them, eat them right away. Right, Richard? <laughs> yes. Peas uh, grow well in gravel and they're yeah. the most com of the common crops that you're used to growing. They yeah. will bud faster. So right here in these pe this pea plant here, uh -huh. the actual peas are starting to come out. I don't know if I've got the camera angle so that you could see them. Yeah, that looks great. But they're actual pea pods now budding. The rest of these will also do well. This right here is a pea shoot. And the pea shoot, this guy here, that's mm -hmm. the microgreen superfood. And you see that, he, yeah, he grows about an inch a day in gravel. Nice. So that's, and then, but this person here, this is the lima beans. They'll probably take another three to four weeks before we actually see them make a lima bean. Okay. We're, and so the peas do make the peas fastest in gravel. Um, and you see what's happening here with this uh, with this um, squash. squash. Yeah, yeah, look at that. That's exciting. Yeah, um, but that's but they're the same age and seed date as the yeah. peas. So. 
So, you know, a question I have with that, actually. Um, So in order to actually get fruit, though, or uh, excuse me, the production of that squash plant, you're going to have to do some pollinating, right? I mean, you'll have to take some paintbrush and move it around a little, right? Because you don't have bees in your basement, obviously, right? Um, Well, so what you're looking at here is an indoor gravel garden. Right. Usually we run these during the winter. Okay. And then we stop. So all of these plants here would normally we I would just start doing it outside okay. and they would all die. So I don't know what's going to happen with these plants over the course of this year. Okay. Because I've never done indoor you know past 3 months. Yeah. And so or past 2 months. Sure. And so I, I do it for the science and the testing, but never. Yeah. So this year, I've expanded the number of crops that I'm testing, and I'm allowing them to go to full term indoors just to see Very while nice. I still while I still do my outdoors. So I don't know what's going to happen with the pollination process of this um, squash. Okay. The, way I, the way I write it in the book, mm-hmm. it says that this squash needs to be transplanted outside okay. and it will not grow to full term okay but i've actually never tried wow we need to do that <laughs> well that, that that's what we're doing now all know, of these right? yeah this is exciting yeah i mean usually I mean, with look, this cilantro look at this. i mean it's it's happening you're doing it and you've got gravel and so i want to ask you we're in, i'm going to kind of take it back here so just so people understand um where you how where did you first become interested in learning about how you can grow things in rocks basically um yeah uh back in 94 1994 okay. mm-hmm. i was living with my uncle and he asked me to come outside and try to explain a phenomenon <laughs> and you know i joked that you know, right. how am i going to come and explain them a, a phenomenon to you a dean of a medical school. Uh-huh. And so what we saw, what I saw when I got outside was a watermelon growing out of a gravel bed. Oh. And I had said at first that obviously the roots of that watermelon are in the ground under the rocks. But then he showed me that there were this fabric under there. So then I theorized <laughs> that it's likely that the rocks are probably providing nutrients for that plant. Um, Because I had been, I had collected, I've been a gym collector as a hobby. Oh, wow. Yeah. Stones and stuff. So I I did have prior experiment experience with geology and knew that sulfur and mica, mica dissolves. Okay. And it's possible that, it can do something. Obviously, it's not. It's more than possible. We're looking at it. Look at it. <laughs> and so we then watch that happen, uh, and then I walked away from it. Yeah. I was like, see, it, it can work. Okay, no big deal. <laughs> and then he started to replicate what he saw for the next ten years. Okay. Growing crops every year, year after year. Right. And then. Um, I would visit and say, okay, nice, cute, whatever. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think anything about it. And then he said, Richard, I came on another visit. He said, okay, I'm doing this because you said it was possible. And yes, it is possible. Okay. But I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I know that it works, but I don't know why it works. I said, okay. He said, I have two questions. Yeah. One, can you figure out how this is, why this is working? Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And two, can you do something about that famine and food thing in Africa with right. it? I'm like, so let me get this straight. Yeah, think about it. You want me to figure it out and then take <laughs> it to market. Well, I do have the ability to figure it out and my resume does suggest that I know how to take things to market so okay fine it is interesting 
and this could be meaningful to the people. Mm-hmm. And so I will begin the process. Totally. To answer those two questions. I mean, seriously, because look what you're showing here. Basically, you have gravel, um, sea gravel. You have just some containers that you're holding it in, and you've put water. It, you know, well, and obviously seeds. You know, you have some seeds. Sort of. <laughs> sort, of. sort of the case. Yeah, the, the rules of gardening with gravel are different than the rules of gardening with soil in many ways. Yeah. And so that cup, all these little tiny gravel grow cups you see here. Yeah. They have 10 to 12 tiny pin size holes throughout the cup wow. for aeration. And if you use conventional cups or pots, mm-hmm. they wouldn't work. You can't have a completely enclosed environment. And then your regular pots, the holes are too big. <clears throat> At the bottom of the gravel is sand. Sand is the irrigation system. Hmm. They need the tiny holes. So although it looks like a cup, yeah. if you think you could just get a cup, put some rocks in there, make it no. pour water in there, it doesn't work like that. Right. That's where the book comes in. Right. But yes, to your point, a handful of rocks and a handful of sand mm-hmm. and you can eat some seeds. Right. And whether so, it's in a cup or whether it's in another container, a plastic bag. But if you if you know how to yeah. configure it, you can have that handful of two items almost in your hand. Right. And things will grow. And uh, you can find out more about this book at twosoilless.com. Uh, if you're tuning in today, please take a look at that. Um, I actually have a copy of it, and I should have a review on my website soon. Um, I'm hoping by the end of the week here, because uh, it, it's cool. I do, I'm really excited about this, uh, what you've got going here. Um, you know, one thing that came to my mind when you were saying, you know, yeah, I saw, you know, my uncle had it growing, and yeah, I just kind of put it on the back burner, right? Well, in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is one of those situations when you're going to be on a deserted island someday, and you're going to be thinking, why didn't I keep thinking about the gravel growing? Because I could be growing food right now, but what was I doing? Well, <laughs> you know, the, the, you know? the plan is to get to you. <laughs> Before you get lost. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, I'm on a race against against time for some people. Yeah. Because for people who are starving, who are living on yes. a coastal island um, yes. and going through starvation like Cape Verde, where they don't have a lot of mm-hmm. uh, good soil. Right. Or people who are actually lost at sea. I mean, if you yeah. take a pack of seeds now right. in your safety packet, right. you go traveling you know, if you if you if you take this crop right here, yeah, that's the pea shoots. You you'll be eating in six days. In it's crazy. Now I'm going to go through and tell you everything you see growing. Okay, sounds okay. good. You ready? Yes. Let's see. Do we have a good? It'll be see, fun. So we're here with Richard Campbell, and he's at twosoilless.com, and you can find him on Twitter as well at twosoilless. And here we go. Let's see your farm. Here's a farm tour. Okay. Awesome. These are this is broccoli planted from seed, I think, on the third of this month. So you see what he wow. does in a couple of weeks. This is a, a gladiola when they're small. This is a couple of weeks yeah. old. This is his big brother. Look at that. You oh see, my gosh. That's, that's gladiolo. That's the big man. Wait, do you remember when animal. you put that one in? I put that one in on like February 5th. Okay. And so we're today is um, we're recording live here on the twenty third of March. So just so okay. people know, this guy, mm-hmm. these are cucumbers planted on the third. Those are cucumbers. Look there. at that, twenty there days. Cucumbers. This is the squash. You saw him. Get, yeah, get a good picture for you. Behind him are the peas. Now those peas are potting, so that's forty five days old. Um, planted around the 5th of February. Pea shoots. Okay. This nasturtium. The nasturtium. Uh, oh, I love nasturtium. Nasturtium flowers. You know you can eat those blooms. No way. Yeah, yeah so that, they're that, gorgeous in that's, salads. And that's nasturtium. Kind of tastes is, like pepper. A little peppery. That's also on the 3rd. I think that's on the, the 3rd of, of March. Okay. So that's still those 20 days. That's how 
that's the kind of growing experience. Oh my gosh, look at that. This is the um, another gladiola. I have them here because it's a cute double. I love how you mix flowers in with uh, herbs and vegetables. Is there well, a reason for that? You're just you're just experimenting, right? I'm experimenting, and people ask for all the things. Like this is zinnias here, and this nice. big bushy guy right here. That's <laughs> lettuce. Now he shouldn't be in this cup. You should really just do this outside. But no, I just went. I just went for it, and there was a lady at one of these trade shows who just started eating it out of the cup. Yes, I was just going to tell you that. You know what you need to do? Have you ate? If you had, have you had lunch yet? Just, just take some scissors and cut that. Just cut it across. It'll come back in a you It'll know what a back. week, two weeks. So and do so that. You have <laughs> you have now bumped this up. And, and level of importance because yeah. we were gonna we were gonna kind of shy away from pushing lettuce much, but if you're saying oh I my can gosh eat that as is yes. like that, then and there's some young great people. varieties out there. There's so oh, many different I've lettuces. Got, oh my gosh, three of them. I've got three different ones being tested now. See, okay, okay. So here we've got cilantro. <laughs> oh yum, I love that. Okay, this guy right here is okra. He's 20 days old as well. Nice. Look at those plants. Behind him is they tomatoes. Oh, tomatoes yum. There. Iris in the back. Lima beans is the big guy. Okay. Basil is right basil, here. Basil. There he is. Look at that. Oh, this is crazy. And then over here, I think we have, that's thyme. Or wow. rosemary. I can't, I, I forgot. I didn't write it down. <laughs> these are Brussels sprouts. It kind of looks like rosemary. Yeah, I think it might be. Kind of does. <laughs> yeah, these are Brussels sprouts. Oh, wow. Look at that. This is an iceberg lettuce. Nice. Cucumbers, peas, more cucumbers, iris. And then we have my stuff in my recycle bin over here. I took a old, uh, you see that? A old. Um, oh, wow. Look at gallon. that. That Look at that. You know what I'm thinking as you're sharing this? You know, I, I love touring different community gardens in town. Like I've seen some really great ones in Chicago, Toledo, even Ohio here, Detroit. And, you know, they the big issue they have is the soil, right? So they do a lot of raised bed plantings and things like that. If you took this technology in the inner city, oh, my word, everyone you, I mean, you could grow this on your kitchen counter. Well, you know? I, <coughs> look around. This is this is a basement room that we don't use. I now know. It. It's a farm. I love your farm. And and <laughs> the cost of all of these materials all in for that. this little farm here, including the lights. These are eight dollar light holders, and you're using your normal standard CFL light. You see that? Yeah. You don't look need at that. super. You don't need the, the super plant light. Oh my word. You get your regular. Now you should get the hundred watt version of this mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. seventy five. Mm -hmm. But these these holders here are eight dollars oh, at Home Depot. <laughs> look and at so that. All of this all in with lights. Yeah. You're looking at probably sixty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> and it's permanent. <clears throat> right. What I mean by permanent is, let me take a plant that's semi-expendable yeah who's expendable so <laughs> the cats have already gotten into this bowl oh, right? no. <laughs> just like outside yeah. <laughs> you know what we've got some more over here so you see the okay. cats the cats are all chopping up my bulbs so I this guy's all he's all he's all battered up so look i can that. take him i can take him out look at that and then i can plant something back oh where I left him. Okay. And I can plant there over and over again for the rest of my life. Look at that. Just Let's plant see. back in there and take this guy and go plant him outside. Protect okay. him. Protect him from the from the cats. So that's that's great information for this so time you, of year. I mean because so everybody's, you know, mm -hmm. basically seeds indoors. You can recycle the gravel permanently. Mm-hmm. You can always take all this stuff out, eat it, harvest it, throw it away, whatever. Yeah. And plants and reassemble your cup and do it forever. That's way awesome. Plants, 
plan something else. I've been showing a few photos that I snagged off your Twitter account, um, which I'd like to invite everybody today. If you're tuning in, please check out uh, at Two Soil Less. Their Twitter account is just filled with beautiful images. I mean, this is the real deal. This is what he is growing, what you can eat. It's organic food out of a, a cup with gravel for the most part. Now, um, we cannot say yeah. the word organic because oh, we can't. Oh, the no. organic <laughs> authorities have to say it's organic. Oh, sure. And I, yes. keep, I keep not finishing the paperwork, mailing it in, and setting up the That's test. true. You do have to be certified to be go, officially. Right. Okay, so I understand that. that we right. are all natural. Okay. And that this is 100% mm -hmm. sustainable. Right. Okay. I'm thinking... Just, just in case any organic people are like, wait a minute. Right, right, right. No, <laughs> sure. I mean, that's a big movement. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you shared that because there's a lot of, you know, bad information or just not bad, just not the, all the information. I mean, cause essentially, I mean, I could grow that organically though. Couldn't I? I mean, well now off if my the seeds record, are certified organic off the record. Uh, well, organic means using less materials than you normally would. And organic means conserving materials. Okay. And, and it's based on a soil based definition. Well, Gravel doesn't use soil or fertilizer ever. So this will likely, once I do my organic test, be be labeled the most organic method known to humanity okay. because you can be on a deserted island with no man-made materials and now survive because of this approach. That's so crazy. you can't be on a... The soil is not that organic. Okay. And the organic methods that they espouse are nothing whatsoever compared to gravel because every every conventional method deteriorates okay and gravel appreciates that's cool all right richard can't scan over on you put that uh little ipad on you there we are hey richard hey guys thanks so much for joining us if you're just tuning in right now i'm bren um i'm the host of the garden chat live uh you can find me over on hashtag garden chat or on my website brenhaas.com and i am honored today to be touring this awesome basically a basement farm of mr richard campbell here as you can see on the screen here uh his his website is at twosoilless.com please Get over there, take a look at it. Um, you've got some really exciting stuff going on here, Richard. Can you maybe share with me, like what what was the coolest thing you've uh, you've experienced growing in gravel? Like what what comes to mind that just blew your mind? Is there anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, ironically, I mean, I am fascinated daily. Mm -hmm. um, but and so I, I keep getting more and more fascinated. Like yeah. I guess today, if you, since you've asked today, yeah, I, I would say it's the rose, it's the rose bush that I put in the. And I took, I bought one of the things from Costco. Uh huh. Put it in a little specially designed gravel pot for rose bushes. Okay. With a special thing, and it'll be in next year's book. The okay. Full display. Wow. And I waited. And when I saw that rose leaf emerge yeah. all over the spot, I was like, oh, wow. And so that's, that's so far. The, Isn't that crazy? There, but then there's this, the new, excuse me, I know, the newest sorry. thing that we figured out. <laughs> we have determined <clears throat> that gravel is so good that once you get the sprouts in these little sproutlets, right? Mm -hmm. What we're finding is, what do you do now? These are little sproutlets. What do, they'll, they'll all crowd up in there. So okay. then we then we came up with the gravel grow bottle. Ah, totally different in configuration, but so simple and efficient. This is probably going to be the next big thing. Okay, so check check this out. Gravel works because the nutrients in the gravel leach out into the water that touches it. That water feeds the plants. Okay. So it's really the gravel water that's important. Oh, okay? okay. It's the water. And it's the water that's the vehicle of getting the nutrients from the gravel into the plant. 
So under that theory, if we put rocks in water, Look those rocks should feed that water. So a few months ago, well, uh, yeah, about 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 a month ago now. Okay. This plant was placed, taken out of the gravel grow cup and put in here. Look at and, that. And as you can see, since it's been put in, it's grown almost a foot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So basically, that one thing of water might take this plant to full term like this, adding so that that's the most that'll be in, that'll end up being wow. the most efficient use of water. So, that's, so you've got you've got a little bit of really... gravel, you've got a little bit of gravel at the bottom, and then I don't. Can we touch base a little bit on the water? Like, because we talked about water last week when me and you talked kind of off right. the record. The biggest mistake people make with the water. Can we can we talk about that a little or? Okay, yeah. That's top secret. <laughs> no, no, it's in. The All right, book. make sure I'm not getting in trouble here. <laughs> it, no, it's in the book, and you know, yeah. as we study this science we come across aspects of regular gardening right. that are peculiar. Um, and one such aspect was that a friend of mine did his, his son, a uh -huh. uh, 10th grader, did a science experiment and had four pots, okay. soil, and, and all with wheatgrass seed. Wow. Then he had four different waters. Hmm. Um, and the, and the, the goal of the experiment was to see if water mattered, the quality of water mattered. Yeah. He had three bottled waters and tap water. Mm -hmm. So after the four weeks, the highest high, you're talking five, six inches high, right. was the uh, pot that had the Fiji water. And that's something. The middle two mm -hmm. were the other bottled waters. They were probably like an inch, inch and a half high. Not something. But the pot that had no growth whatsoever was the DC tap water. Ah, oh, that's really so scary. So next time you think you have a brown thumb, <laughs> yeah, it might be your water. Yeah, I've experienced I've experienced that now, with gravel, house plants. Gravel, and, you know, everything you see mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. is in is in regular tap water. Like wow. I I do use Fiji yeah. because of that experiment a little bit more. Meaning that yeah. I'll if I if I'm going on TV and I have to do a rush grow, yeah, like I have to I have to pick up two days in my growth cycle. Yeah, and the, I, I, my, the TV shows in four days. What do I do? <laughs> I'll just add Fiji water. And that'll give me an extra day. <laughs> but otherwise, you can just go with regular DC right. water. Or regular I'm going to note we're not like sponsoring water. Fuji water here or anything. It's just that was just the, the results of the test. <laughs> right. Very cool. So um, we gave away a couple of these little kits. I have the box here still. Um, on Garden and Chat. The, so and, people yeah. can do this. They can play with this at home and give it a try. Right. Yeah, we call that the gift of sustainability. Yeah. Give love the that. gift of sustainability. You can choose what you want to grow. The person you had before, I didn't get a choice of um, seed type, so we put in pea shoots. Oh, okay. Okay. And those are those are quick. Um, quick the one we edibles. the one we sent out to the winner on Garden Chat right. is that what? You're, yeah, that right. was an uh, awesome gardener down in Atlanta. I'm kind of excited to see uh, Garden Jerry is her name. Um, uh, it'd be cool to see how she likes this because I right. know she will. I'm going to open it up. So you just keep talking and I'm going to show what's in here. Okay. Okay. Basically in the gift of sustainability, you have your requisite amount of gravel, the right stuff, the good stuff. Um, not all gravels, the river rock is the same in terms of ability to grow crops. So we that's the best tested among all common retail gravels on the East Coast. Right. And then you have... Well, you got little, some little have, seeds in here. You got your seed pack. These are the beans. I think, I think if you put them closer to the thing, I think there are two types of seeds in there. Yep. They're lima beans and peas. You could, you could actually put those in that cup together. It'll just grow wild and big, but it'll yeah. be fun to watch. I know. I can't wait. I actually... I was kind of putting this off because I wanted to show what comes in the kit. Um, my my um, 
plant that I did start, you sent me two of these to experiment with. It's doing great. It's on my kitchen counter. I love it because all I do is put water in it and the water I'm using is directly out of my well. It just, it does go through a system to pull like uh, the sulfur out of it and that, but it's and all so country have, water. Here's yep, you have sand. Cup. That's the irrigation, the appropriate amount of sand. Yep. Um, no, the seeds don't germinate in the sand. <laughs> no. Oh. But yes, the roots will do well. Now that's your cup, <laughs> and so you have to just punch out the dimple. Please. Yeah, I see that. Sorry, that might have been. Yeah. Sorry. Punch that. <laughs> and then if you look closely Same. at the bottom, Bryn, you'll see the, uh, yes. and that's a drip tray. You'll see the tiny holes. I don't know how I did that. I did that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, there they, yep. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. On there. Yeah, they won't be able to see that. On no, that and then camera, you got your cute little tray. Drip tray, yes. So and we keep we keep it clear so you can watch the growth really mm -hmm. closely. So when you plant um, this uh, this um, cucumber, you see the roots? Yeah. Look at when that. You, when you plant, That's awesome. put at least one of the seeds on the side of the cup so directions. you can watch it open. Oh, the directions. Yeah. <laughs> Directions the are important critical. thing. <laughs> the bottom. Yeah. The rules right. of gardening are different. And everybody who thinks they've got this because they heard a part of this yeah, yeah, today, yeah. Yeah. you won't get it. Mm -mm. There's so many things that are different. Yeah. Even next year's configuration of the outdoor roses yeah. are totally different than how that's cool. The normal garden is set up. So that's the next year's book. And then right. like it's just a lot of a lot of small differences. Yeah. that'll make it um challenging for you and we've we've been looking at this now 20 years so we wow. do we have been able to refine it to this point okay to make it a consumable thing right so the research um your book the book that you can find on richard's website at twosoilwest.com um this i mean they, you've been putting some time and pretty extensive research in on this yeah. yeah 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 what we what we found <laughs> early um was that this was actually all together probably mm -hmm. humanity's first new science in, a, in in hundreds of years because the scientists of modern day humanity have mm -hmm. no idea clue point of reference knowledge right. they actually <laughs> refute this and cast it out as some heresy. It's actually quite interesting. And wow. so because of that, at, to your point on study, yes, yeah. the study on this is gonna be as long and old as the study on soil. We've only just reached the That's tip wonderful. of the iceberg of what this rock can do. I yeah. only know 1% of the power of these rocks and then this rock comes from the Susquehanna River in Maryland. Okay. Every rock type from every river is different. There are right. thousands of rivers. That means there right. are thousands of river rock types. Okay. Which I'm going to cut in. I'm, so I'm going to cut in really quick yeah. just to let people know. Um, if you're joining us live today, thank you so much. Um, I please, I encourage you to ask questions. Um, if you're you're joining us here on Blab, all you do is um, do a slash Q and ask your question. And we got Richard here. Ask away. This is I'm really excited about this technology. It's very cool. Ooh, I do so, see this note on here yeah. from I think Chapstick. Uh -oh, yeah, Chavana. Well, if you're in Maryland, yeah. um, get the book first. But yeah. Only buy your gravel from Ace Hardware. Yeah. They had the best tested gravel between Home Depot, Lowe's, and Ace. Mm -hmm. They've got the best stuff. Mm -hmm. But don't just go to the store and buy it. You'll lose. You'll lose. You have to read the book right. so you don't yeah. make the mistake. A friend of mine, he's like, Richard, 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 give me the book. Give me the book. He got the book. Yeah. He got it, bought it, and before reading it, ran to Home Depot. Okay. And spent $500 in gravel of no. the wrong kind. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because <laughs> he got the book, and he thought that, I guess, he would know it by osmosis. Yeah. So <laughs> knowledge right. is not taught by osmosis. No. And uh, <laughs> so then we had to go back and do some re-engineering and yeah. then it's gravel surgery. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then now he's in the book. He's featured as one of the gardens, the Oliver Garden. If you okay. get to the book, and it's a magnificent garden. I mean, his stuff. I don't even understand it. It's, it's a beautiful. He's really, he's really, he really as a as a as a homeowner, he masters it. You master gravel. You know when you've mastered gravel when you got too much food to eat every season. Ugh, and you like got you do, right bad. there on the counter. Yeah, I want to see yeah. a lettuce on your Twitter feed. I want to see you making a salad later today. Okay. All right? I, I, I'm well, going to well, stalk you. Well, well, I can't. I can't. This <laughs> guy right here, you know, if you looked at my him. last Twitter, right. I think his, his statement on my last <laughs> Twitter post was, my bush is green. So he's got a personality. We want to see what he does. All right. Like, I'm sending you more it. seeds. I'm going to send you well, some lettuce seeds. You need to start oh, more of those. Oh, no, no, no. These guys right here are two <laughs> lettuce types. They're coming. All right. We're, we're, we're good. Yeah. But this one, he, he's under experimental watch. Okay. All right. I get it. I get it. Yeah. And so, um, so we have a houseplant guru in the house. Hey, Lisa. Uh, she's curious if you've tried this with um, any houseplants. So not really. You need to do that. Um, like, like which one? I know you could. House, I mean, you got well, irises about, in there. The thing about houseplants, mm -hmm. the indoor houseplants mm -hmm. that you buy at Home Depot. Yeah. Okay. They come in a big, huge soil ball. Yeah. That pot. Yeah, they do. So you would have to create a special bigger pot around all of that and submerge the soil ball in it. Yeah, no, you can't do that. But you could start cuttings. There you go. I haven't done cuttings in gravel. All right. Now, cuttings and soil work, I'm going to have to study cuttings. Yeah. That's going to have to be something for the 2017 book. <laughs> But I will, I will look at cuttings in urns. And um, for those who who want to, to experiment with me, um, yeah. read the book before you do, because yeah. you're going to need to read the book to figure out how to adapt cutting science to gravel science. There you go. And then cut it that way. So I'm going to go and study what they do in cutting, because now, now you, 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 you might say, well, Richard, just put it in the cup. Yeah. You can't do that with gravel. No. Gravel has three layers. The top layer, the top inch, is the dry layer. Mm -hmm. It'll always be hot. It will cook anything in there. So mm -hmm. if you plant seeds in the top inch, mm -hmm. you're lost. Right. All seed packages say plant in the top inch or the top half inch. Okay. So if you follow any of the instructions, no, it's not going to work. Right, right. And so with cuttings, I imagine you're just going to have to stick it deeper. It's either stick it deeper in the center or stick it deeper to the root. And so it's about how you cut. It's going to be a little interesting. You might have to do a certain type of of um, pre. I'm going to experiment with it. There you I'll go. I'll post it on Twitter as I experiment. Those of you who have knowledge of cutting, email me. Richard yes. at the soil list. I'm looking to collaborate mm -hmm. with all of society there you go. and I need to, so I can't study this all by myself. Right. Well, and yeah, this sounds like a great opportunity too for Lisa too, because she is the house plant guru. This could be like a whole chapter in your upcoming book, Lisa. There you go. Right. Growing and growing. Also, <laughs> because every year we learn and write new things, we yeah. have to issue a new book every year on what we've learned. Okay. So next year's book, you know, this year's book's about 200 pages. Next year's probably going to be already 220, just based on yeah. the gravel grobato I just showed you. Yeah. The indoor garden, what is this yeah. going to do Look all that. year long? And then now gravel cuttings. I mean, you know, cuttings as cuttings, a way to yeah. germinate. Right. So those that's three chapters <laughs> already added to the 2017 wow. book. That's what I mean by the science. This is a new science. Yeah. And every year we have to write new stuff. There you go. Because... I'm only I'm the only person studying it closely so far. Right, that you know of, right? Yeah. How cool. That was awesome. Uh, you know, and actually when I mean I know there's all different types of varieties of houseplants, but when I'm thinking why I like growing houseplants is just to have that green indoors. I mean, you've essentially created that. I mean, you you know, it's kind of the same thing kind of maybe, but I mean not Well, exactly. interestingly enough, you know, because yeah. this I have this at Ace Hardware. Okay. And the challenge is, 
and I really do need to to tackle the house plant uh, problem. But the challenge with gravel and house plants yeah. is these guys grow fast, right? So you got to keep checking in on them. House plants are those things you kind of let sit. This you yeah. got to keep watching because they grow so fast. True. You got to make sure you got your trellis. If you want these peas to continue, you got to pick them at the right time. So, so there's cute. management. Yeah. This is a garden that you you do have to manage. Now, with these bulbs and stuff, that's that's our easy, easy yeah. grow and go. That's a good house plant. But what happens when he gets really tall? You got to manage know, right? it again. You need a bigger so, bucket of gravel. Yeah, yeah. And so... <laughs> I'm trying to come out with all the do's and don'ts sure. of indoor gravel gardening. No, this is exciting. Um, but for right now, yeah. our, what we're saying for those people who are juicer types mm-hmm. or those people who are looking for edibles, mm-hmm. go ahead and get your pea, your pea shoots and your wheatgrass and your bean sprouts and your yeah. alfalfa sprouts and broccoli sprouts. Drop them in. They do well. Yeah. And you can juice and, and have those sprouts all the time. With this other stuff, you can set them up as seedlings and saplings and transplant, or you can do like yeah. I'm doing and watch them go to full term. Look at that. They, they, you know, <clears throat> it doesn't hurt either way. It's very exciting. And you can watch that on Richard's Twitter feed. They are sharing as they grow. You guys share pretty much daily. It looks great. And that is at Two Soil Less on Twitter. And also check out their website at twosoilless.com. Um, I, you know, I, we got a little bit of time left here, just a little bit, because I know we all, you know, it's spring and we're, you know, we're gardeners. We're ready to get out there and, uh, and do some well, gardening. What, what we can do, <laughs> I, can, I can run out and show you what's happening outside. I'd be scared to lose you with the cell with connection. The, with, I don't know. Yeah, the Wi-Fi. Really yeah, you can, we could lose it. We can watch you on Twitter with that. Um, we'll set one up. We'll set We'll set up the yeah, outside no, version. That'd be great. That'd be day. great. Actually, yeah, that'd be neat later in the summer to see. You have gravel mm-hmm. out there, too, that you're experimenting with? Yep. On the Twitter, wow. I just posted the... Um, there you go. And, and I'm going to do one today. We have where... Um, what's my favorite vegetable? Yeah, to there grow? you go. <laughs> um... My favorite vegetable to grow. Thanks for asking in the chat room. It's there. gonna, it's gonna have to be the the, the what, we're, what what we have for our homeless program and our school nutrition program, and those are the pea shoots. And 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 Bryn, you had one picture of it earlier. Yeah, it was the big hangy thing. This is this is the pea shoots hanging as a hanging plant. Look at that. That's. That's all nutrition. That's all food. And I love the, and that's a super food. This food type is the strongest and most powerful of all the things I'm growing here. Mm -hmm. This has the most nutrient value. So the fact that what has the most nutrient value can grow at an inch a day in gravel makes that the winner because of what it can do for humanity in terms of, um, survival, nutrition, access to food very quickly. Definitely. Um, you're, talking five, you're talking five days, six days, and you're eating. Well, and if you if you have a good amount of seeds, you know, now you don't die. And starvation doesn't kick in that quickly. Right. And so um, that's, that, that's, that's the, and interestingly yeah. enough, the reason we got to that plant was my son. See, we planted those indoor pea shoots yeah. outdoors, and they get about two feet, three feet outdoors. Wow. My son would go to the school garden, gravel garden. There are uh-huh. many photos of this at the Lowell School in Washington, D.C., many photos on Twitter over the past several years. Yeah. And he would sneak and rip out pea shoots out of the garden and stuff them in his mouth. <laughs> Daddy, this is so good. It is Can I good. Get one more bite, please. I'm like, what? Don't you They're have sweet. to watch? Uh, and he would take a bite, put it in his mouth, rip uh, another no. handful, and bring it in the car and eat it on the way home. <laughs> That's and I awesome. Said, okay, that needs to be. This is this is it. And then once I once I um research what pea shoots actually are and how potent they are in nutrition yeah. 
that that that's it. That's the one that yeah. we, we're doing as our homeless. That's the ones we want to give to the homeless. Gosh, so you we, can't beat that. that. No, and just having a for the kid. I mean, he's got peas in his pocket. I, mean, I can think of a lot worse edible things that, that kids put in their pockets, like beef uh, jerky or jelly beans. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's awesome. So we had another question in the chat room. Um, thanks for joining us live today. Uh, what made you think of trying this research? We kind of talked about that in the beginning, but maybe yeah. you could share again. That'd be great. Yeah. Basically, we yeah. found, we discovered this by accident when we saw watermelon growing in gravel. Yeah. And I theorized to my uncle that rocks was possible. And then a few yeah. years, you know, years later, he asked me to, Richard, okay, you gave me the theory. I'm asking you, can you please figure this out? That's cool. And so I was asked to figure it out. And Very why, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Good Thank stuff. You. I love it too. Um, how exciting. So I'm wondering, I should have asked you before, but maybe can we give away another one of these kits maybe somewhere? Yeah, maybe sure. say Facebook, maybe? Yeah. Maybe I we mean, can take it over to the Facebook Garden Chat community, which I invite everybody to get over there. Um, just put how, Garden Chat. You do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. we'll feature this on there and, you know, just join us over there. Um, and you could get one of these kits just if for anything just to inspire you to really think you know beyond soil i mean what you and, and so- i i invite you to get the kit and yeah. drop a whole bunch of seeds in there yeah yeah drop yeah. marigold seeds on the left yeah. drop bean seeds on the right and yeah. pea seeds in the center and just watch it <laughs> yeah it will you know they won't all finish but they'll all be exciting to watch in that little cup. You know, after now that we've done this presentation, I'm actually, um, within the next hour here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start my next batch. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to drop some more different uh, pea seeds in there so I can have a whole thing full of just... Yeah, and drop them all. You know what? How many seeds did you have in that pack? There wasn't very many, but that's okay. It's just a sample. Put put them all in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put all both types. But you you could, like, double that easily, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the put the lima beans on the left side of the cup. Make yeah. sure you put one seed close to the to the edge yeah. so you can watch it, and the other seeds in the center. Okay. Because it's going to need the support once it gets big. That makes um, sense. Okay. And then do the same with the peas. Okay. And then be ready to get one of these trellis Look at that. together. I you're love gonna, that. You're going to need one. Of my, this is the gravel ladder. The gravel ladder. Do you have that in your book? The, no, the latter piece came out this year okay. after the book closed. That's part of the 2017. The new book. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's awesome. And please, everybody, stop over at Richard's website, twosoilless.com. Find out more. You got to get this book. It's cool. Um, thank you so much, Richard. This is very exciting. Uh, I'm excited to continue following you. And you're, you're doing some amazing things, um, not just in thank your you. community, but, on, but online. I mean, you're sharing this. Uh, it's great. Thank you. Well, you know, go online, you know, download um, the manual, learn the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the secret is to learn it. I'm not trying to fish for you, but the manual yeah. shows you all the fishing you need to do yeah. to maximize every bit of this. And once you go gravel, your costs will go go away because you see my little farm here. Yeah. I don't have to buy anything else except seeds for this farm ever again that's amazing that's it no more cost no more cost except seeds and a lot of these plants as you know seed themselves very cool all right and once again folks please be sure to stop over at twosoilless.com 